if you'd like to make sure your phones are off. I don't, I feel like I'm at a news conference. There's all these microphones everywhere. <laughs> what? Mic on. Oh, how do I do that? Oh, there it is. Now it's on. Yeah, now it's on. Okay. I figured I was just going to have to yell most of the time. Well, happy Sunday, everyone. Happy it's a beautiful, beautiful day outside. Yes. And so, welcome home. First of all, we want to acknowledge, uh, the, do our land acknowledgement. So the Eureka Center for Spiritual Living acknowledges that the land on which we gather is the ancestral territory of the Weat peoples. This territory extends to the communities through most of Humboldt County, and we honor the Weat peoples today. Hold. Hold. Thank you. So let's say this together. And then we'll turn to someone, and we'll just use the affirmation that's up there. I'm not like the guys who change it every day. <laughs> <laughs> It's easier for me here. Okay, are we ready? Yes. We are a welcoming community where the vibration of love lifts us, the wisdom of the ages inspires us, and the science of mind teaching empowers us. And so turn to somebody. I honor the path that brought you here this morning. So let's get on with the business of today. Uh, our, our, you can see our schedule for this week. We've got two Course in Miracles things happening, actually. One on Mondays with Burl, and I think that's on Zoom, and then one in person with uh, Bree, and there she is. <laughs> so that's great. So, um, and also, this Tuesday, we're starting, the book circle is starting a brand new book. Well, the book isn't brand new. It's actually the last of the Conversation of God series, and it's called Home with God in a Life That Never Ends by Neil Donald Walsh. And um, Burl recommended this book. She said that her Friday book group is reading it. And I said, uh, oh, are you going to join us for the, for the Tuesday group? And she goes, yes. She wants to read it again. I so, really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so there must be some really good stuff in it. And, and then Vicki pointed out uh, the other day that the book is a conversation. So normally what we do in our book group is we read the books out loud. We take turns reading them and discussing them. And this time we'll need two readers each time because one gets to play God. Oh. <laughs> Woo and the last thing that I have on here is Saturday's men's group uh, from 3 to 4.30. So did you want to say anything about that? Yeah. But do it sh quickly. <laughs> yeah, because I um, tend to be a little windy. Uh, <laughs> now that could be two fans. That we're talking about. <laughs> well, at my age, both are true. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just wrote down everything so I can do this quickly. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> As children, we formulate who we are and who we will become. And to a certain point, we begin choosing our pathways in life. We learn about society and our place in it by choosing our role models, parents, teachers, television shows, entertainers, peers, relatives we admire, and so on. We are taught by them as men how to be men. We accept, incorporate what our roles teach us about how to think, act, 
and live our lives even if those lessons feel wrong. As children, we play freely and accept the wonder of life for what it is. But now we're given restrictions. We are given rules and role identity. Men don't play with dolls unless they're approved by masculine or other uh, women or men. Men are hunters and workers. Women are gatherers and nurturers. Men are always strong and decisive. We fix cars. We build things. We have all the answers. We never run from a fight or conflict or bully, even if we know we can't win the fight and may be hurt badly. We bravely take the, that beating, and we don't, uh, and if we don't, we are cowards or sissies. A real man is homophobic, not gay or bisexual. A real man keeps any feelings of vulnerability, doubt, fear, pain, and anguish inside and hidden from the world because men don't cry. We suck it up, at least in public. We are heads of our family, kings of our castle, and if we choose to do differently or dress differently or live differently from what is acceptable to our role as men, or if we choose to live within the LGBT community, we are considered somehow defective, and we are shunned and ostracized by the so-called real men, and sometimes by the women who have also been indoctrinated into gender thinking. Sometimes we are even cast aside by our own families. And inside of that, the man, the pain, the loneliness, self-doubt is mounting. The child within is crying. And our relationships, our happiness, and ability to make others happy, our creativity and self-worth, or our ability to make wise choices and decisions suffer. What drew us to this center was that inner voice that inner child trying desperately to survive. The truth and openness of this philosophy offers a chance for that inner child within us to emerge again. So it led us here. We are here to change our thinking and change our lives by bringing that inner child into our present consciousness so that we may examine the teachings and past actions of ours that suppressed and buried it. The men's support group gives us a chance to come together in an atmosphere of strict confidentiality. We learn to let our inner turmoil expose our pain, examine our deeds and beliefs, and see them for what they are. We learn how to apply spiritual truth to those situations, and eventually we learn to forgive both ourselves and the others that have contributed to our pain. We learn to see those in our lives who are still living within society's illusions and indoctrinations and forgive them. We work towards laying our issues to rest and becoming the person who we've always seen in our minds as our ideal self. And uh, we meet every Saturday from 3 to 4.30, and we have a sign-up sheet there. Thanks. <laughs> Tonight, for those of you who signed up, and maybe some of you didn't sign up but you'd like to come, we're doing an Honoring the Autumn Equinox at Lori Richardson's house. She's going to need some help getting the tables in her car or the chairs. So um, Lori's seated back there. You could talk to her afterwards. Uh, we're going to bring potluck dinner and then have an experience around the fire pit. So uh, join us if you'd like, but you, you need to let us know so that um, we can make sure we have enough chairs and table, etc. And that's tonight, 5 o'clock. There's the book that I talked about we're, that we're going to be doing starting this Tuesday. There's the men's group. Isn't that a neat logo? Amy yeah. designed that. I like it. That's cool. And let me talk to you for just a couple minutes about the foundations of the science mind. This obviously, is a foundational class. That's what it's called, Foundations of Science of Mind. And so if you're new or even if you've taken it before and, you know, you think you know it all, 
might not have taken it with me. So uh, there's a sign-up sheet over there. I need to know uh, within a couple weeks so that I can make sure I make up enough workbooks. It's going to be really good. I, I get something out of every Science of Mind class I take, and in particular this one. Sometimes it's good to go back to basics, right? Okay. This is going to start on Wednesday mornings from 10 to noon on 10-2, October 2nd. And then Wednesday evenings. Right now there's only one person signed up for evenings, so that might not happen unless some other people sign up So on Zoom. But anyway, there you go. This is the perfect class to be taking as we start this school year. Better together. So we have two things. Uh, one is uh, Rose wants to know if anyone's interested for, with bowling. There should be a sign-up chair over there. And October 3rd, we're going to go and see Donna Landry and the vintage New Orleans Jazz at the Red Lion. So that's going to be great fun. What? Yeah, bring your dancing shoes, really. Yes. Is it the bar at the Red Lion Hotel or it's the Little Red Lion Bar? Hotel. It's the hotel. And last time he told me it was seven, and this time he told me it was eight. Yeah, it's, they're still juggling bands, but I think eight's probably closer. We can narrow it down. Okay, so you'll let us know the exact time uh, before <laughs> October 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to be there. You should know the answer. I should know that. <laughs> our bookstore, in our bookstore, any ECSL author, <coughs> that means one of us, uh, the books are three dollars off. Mine is two dollars off, and I think there's only one of mine in there. We, they're all really good books. I'm proud of us. And of course, our little pantry always needs to be fed. I didn't look at it this morning. You looked at it, Donna. Do yeah, we? It's got, it's got some food in it. Maybe not a whole lot, but it still needs a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, it does. So if you're heading for the grocery store this week and you see something on sale and you want to bring it, that'd be great. Uh, I know from talking to somebody who was getting food one day, they really appreciate the pop-top cans. And uh, the milk and juice are good, too. So, I mean, they appreciate anything. I discovered, however, was it you that told me that the high school kids are grabbing the snack bars? Or was that somebody else? That's what they're there for. Yep. That's what I thought. Well, if, if to feed people. You know, it's the one that makes you drink and uh, so you don't feed them. Oh, and they throw it in the... Yeah, they throw them in my yard. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like the baby food or something. I don't know. Maybe they get the chickens. And the ravens like it. Yeah, the ravens like it, definitely. All right. This month, we've been working on possibilities. And I just love the way Scott designs these every month. They're so cool. Wait till you see October's. OK, let's get on with the spiritual part of our service. The, um, that's it for the announcements. Michelle is doing our contemplative, our moment of peace. Thank you, Michelle. Sure. Morning, everyone, and happy equinox. Oh, yeah. Yeah, beginning of fall. So I have a short reading from uh, today's actual daily readings in the Science of Mind magazine, just kind of introducing the equinox. And then there's a short quote from Ernest Holmes, Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder. And so after I read that, we'll have a few moments of silence, and Jackson will uh, bring us into our affirmative prayer to start the service, the invocation. So if you just allow yourself to relax and just be in this place at this time. Mother Nature's change of seasons offers the perfect opportunity to reflect on the change of seasons within us. Today we welcome a new season and an equinox, a twice a year event where the sun is directly over the equator 
and the hours of daylight are equal to the hours of darkness. This is an auspicious time to revisit spiritual goals and release what no longer serves us. Taking stock is a way of spiritual streamlining. And from Ernest Holmes, this thing called you. When the time comes that nothing goes forth from you other than that which you would be glad to have return, then you will have reached your heaven. And yes, we are one family, that one family of spirit that is within each and every one of us, that is within all beings, all trees, all plants, all birds, all humans. It is this essence of being, this connection that we all have. And as we come together this morning on this beautiful fall equinox, I know that we are in the right place that the words that Reverend Angelica has for us today will be just what we need to hear to lift our hearts, to expand our consciousness in our world and that beautiful joy and energy of spirit and allow it to flow in, through, and out of us and into our world. And so I let this part of the service unfold in its right and perfect way. And so it is. So it is. <clears throat> One. And now I'd like to welcome again 
Reverend Angelica. Well, good morning again, and good morning, Zoomers. It's good to have everybody with us this morning. Uh, my talk this morning is going to uh, play off of the talk that I did last week a little bit. I've been thinking a lot about this, the ripple effect. And um, so I, I googled the ripple effect. And it says the ripple effect refers to an idea that small actions or events can create a chain reaction influencing outcomes far beyond the initial action. So remember I talked about throwing a stone into a clear pond last week and how you throw that stone in and the ripples go out, you know, till they hit the shore. One thing I noticed when actually trying that uh, a few years ago was that once they get to the shore, they turn around and they come back, right? And I also, sitting there during the uh, moment of peace, I thought of something um, that I don't have in this talk, but it wants to come out. So, uh, you know what does? I don't know whether it's called super string or just string theory. Do you know what string theory is? String theory is okay. So, down in in those atoms and cells and everything that fill up our bodies, they. I remember watching this program on science TV or whatever it was, that even in those, if you keep going, you find these strings and they're circles, you know, like rubber bands or whatever. And I thought about the fact that our thoughts and our feelings have an effect on those as well. I'd really, you didn't talk when I'm talking, please. <laughs> For some reason, I can hear you and it makes me then I want to know, what are you talking about, my curious mind? It's like, wait, what is she saying? Anyway, so there's, the, there's these strings that uh, they float along in the ether stuff that makes up our bodies, and they bump into each other, and then they, you know, spring off, and, and they, but the thing is, is that they're vibrating all the time, and that those strings are setting up a ripple effect in this stuff, that we're calling divine energy, that absolutely everything is made of. And then I thought about these super strings, and I thought about the fact that they're not guided so much by our thoughts, but by our feelings. Do you know Dr. Holmes once said that if he had, could do it all over again, he wouldn't just call it the science of mind, this thing that we're studying all the time. It would be the science of mind and the religion of the heart. In other words, it's about mind and feelings. And so here we are uh, in this idea of ripples. And doesn't, isn't it the Grateful Dead, I think, has a song called Ripples? Yeah. yeah. The, um, that, things that go through my mind, I swear. <laughs> anyway, the ripple effect. The ripple effect, yeah. So a ripple effect, if you think about this for a moment, a kind act can inspire other people to do kind acts. If we do a kind act, people that observe it might also do a kind act. The same happens with negative actions. They can trigger harmful effects, and uh, not only can they trigger harmful effects in the radiation that we're spreading out, but also somebody else sees that, and then they feel safe to do those harmful effects as well. And this is something that we're now seeing in the, in the co collective consciousness of the United States. There's a calmness and there's a not so calmness going on. And I'm, I'm trying to stay in the calmness as much as possible. So in essence, every spiritual act, in fact, every act that we have or perform has the potential to ripple through the cosmos. Nothing stays just with us. If we think that we don't make a difference, we need to start thinking about that again, because we're always making a difference. 
to ourselves first and foremost, and then to others that we might not even be aware of. I remember being at a Philomar one year, and uh, this person came up to me after a meal and said, you know, they wanted to greet me and everything, and they said that I made such a difference in their lives, and I'm thinking, I've never met this person. <laughs> She says, you were on my ministerial panel. It's like, oh, I was? <laughs> <laughs> but something I said during that paneling session made a big difference to her. And I don't even remember who she is. So this is what's happening all the time. Every action every feeling that we throw out into the universe, everything is having an effect on everything. And while I'm sitting there in the meditation earlier with Doug, I had this feeling of uh, walking through my garden yesterday, and the, suddenly I saw it in my mind's eye as a totally different image not just daisies there and a huge acacia tree over there and a bed of roses here and my kahili ginger is blooming like crazy, which I'm really happy about. Uh, that's something from Hawaii that uh, Michelle gave me four plants and now they're all along the side of my yard and they just smell so good. It's amazing. Anyway, the picture that I saw in my mind was even the little blades of grass putting out a ripple effect. Even all those dandelions are putting out a ripple effect. Everything is putting out a ripple effect. And then I, I, I remember Flash then on walking back into my home, and I have a new cat. I got it recently. It's a beautiful uh, Siamese cat. His papers say he's Tonkinese, which I don't know anything about, but... He's one of the most loving, affectionate cats I've ever met. And he has Sandy, who uh, is my female cat, doesn't like other cats. She won't allow Curly, the one that I rescued off the street that I've talked to you about, uh, she doesn't like him in the bedroom. That's her territory. Nobody better come in there. And I walked into my house yesterday, and Sandy and Apollo, that's the new cat's name, were laying right next to each other, curled up. Aww. And I'm thinking, Apollo walks through the house radiating this love and peace, and Sandy walks through the house. <laughs> I mean, she's even a big cat, right? She, she walks through, this is my place. And so I'm watching this interaction of these ripples going on everywhere. Everywhere. You know, in the science of mind, possibility is rooted in the understanding that we're all interconnected and that our thoughts and beliefs shape our experiences. When we think about what is possible, we're not just considering the constraints we see with our physical eyes, we're tapping into the boundary, boundless potential of the universe. I think that we've been thinking too small. I don't think that we understand how powerful we are and how important it is, especially in community, to do good work for the whole. And so in a minute, we're going to do a meditation. But one of the things I know is that when we're um, in this idea of community, and we, well, let's go back to that pond. So you throw the rock in, and immediately the water begins to ripple outward, affecting everything in its path. Everything we think, we say, and we do, and we feel affects waves in the universe. I want us to remember that. So if you're watching the news, getting all pissed off, guess what? You're, 
think about what energy you're rippling out. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to do love. So how do you do these things? Well, I think that we can create these ripples intentionally, as I said. One is through affirmations and positive thinking. So we allow ourselves to do affirmations for peace, for instance, like I've been putting on my Facebook page every day. So you start out your day, perhaps, with an affirmation of, you know, today my ripples are going to be loving. Positive thinking. Allow yourself to pay attention to when you're not thinking positively, when you're thinking negatively. It seems to me that negative thinking is the most common thinking that we humans have. And you know what? Where do we get it? We get it when we're a kid, right? You're a baby. You're walking around, two years old. You touch something, and your mother goes, no, no, no. Right? Can't touch that. You're told, you're told you can't talk to other people. You know, they might be dangerous. We're taught lots of things as children, and then the universe brings more ripples back to us that prove that those things that we're being taught are right. However, we can change those. One of the ways we can change them is by doing meditations, reflecting on the possibilities you wish to see manifested in your world. And action. You know, take consistent action that aligns with your vision. And the good thing about it is it doesn't have to be some monumental action. You know, sometimes when people are looking for their purpose in life, I find that one of the things that we need to do is forget the idea that the purpose is supposed to be big. A small purpose in our judgment, has the same effect that a big purpose does. So I always ask people who come to me about treating for their purpose, what is it that you love to do? What brings you joy? That's your purpose. It could be something silly, like pulling weeds, you know? <laughs> or maybe. Making blankets, absolutely, crocheting. I crochet a lot. But whatever it is, whatever we're doing, I want us to remember that every single thought, feeling, and action is setting up a ripple. And we want those ripples to be what? Positive, loving, harmonious caring, compassionate. I loved it when a few years ago the Dalai Lama said that compassion is his religion, or kindness is what he actually said, is my religion. And I thought, yeah, what a great thing. Because I, after being with him in India quite a few years ago for a whole day, he, uh, he laughs a lot. And it's, you know, sometimes I'm wondering when he was speaking to us and somebody would, he'd ask questions and somebody would answer and he'd say something in his native language to his assistant and the assistant would start laughing and then he would start laughing and he doesn't just go ha ha ha, I mean he's whole body laughter, right? And I'd be thinking, well, what was funny about that? You know? <laughs> But his whole life is about joy, you know. So let's do a meditation. I want us to, we have been focusing on this idea of peace and the possibility of peace. And I want you to, I'm going to do a guided visualization. So you, basically all you have to do is follow my directions. I like telling people what to do. <laughs> I went to school with you ever a drill sergeant. What? Pat, I what? Said, were, were you ever a drill sergeant in your other life? In a past life? Yeah. 
I don't think I tell people to do things like a drill sergeant. I'm more calm about it. Exactly. I was curious. <clears throat> the only thing I know about my past lives is I was once a, a, a pioneer woman who came to somewhere in the United States in a covered wagon. I was a missionary's daughter. That's what a Hawaiian kahuna told me and that my father had caused a lot of problems in the Hawaiian culture. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. <laughs> Let's, don't distract me now. Okay, let's take a breath. And let yourself just be comfortable in your seat. And as you're breathing in, breathe in peace. And as you're breathing out, breathe out anything that is unlike peace. Breathe in peace and breathe out tension. I want you to feel the energy, the divine energy that surrounds you right now. If you can't feel it, just imagine it. Imagine that with every breath you're taking, with every thought you're thinking, there is a vibration that goes out from you like a ripple in a pond. And so feel the energy of that ripple. You might feel it from your heart space. You might feel it from your stomach. But allow yourself to feel this divine energy as it ripples out. And then allow yourself to open up to feeling the ripples from others in this room. And you don't have to give them a name like love or compassion or any of that. Just feel it. Feel the energy that is in, your, in this room. Allow yourself to take another deep breath. And with this breath, allow, with this exhalation, let yourself feel the energy going even further outside this room, outside this city. Allow yourself to feel these circles of energy moving out from you further than you could possibly ever imagine. Now give a name to that energy. Is it love? Kindness? Compassion? And keep feeling that energy moving out, that ripple. and let it move across the face of the United States. And feel it meeting up with other circles of energy. Ripples. And 
And because you're giving out a positive ripple, you feel positive ripples in return. Allow yourself to take another deep breath. And this time as you breathe out, feel the energy that you're emitting. Move all the way around the planet. Allow yourself to see in your mind's eye our planet surrounded by whatever you have named your ripples. And sometimes when I'm feeling these ripples moving out, in order to be even more aware of them, I put my finger on my pulse. And I feel that with every beat of my pulse, a new ripple has gone out. And just imagine that that pulse is created by the energy, the divine energy in your system. And it is being used consciously right now to create peace everywhere on our planet. Take another breath and let your awareness come back to this room. Again, feeling the ripples from everyone in the room. And then feeling the ripples around your own body. And allow your consciousness to go deep within your body, into every cell and atom of your body. And feel the ripples that are being set up there. It's all divine energy. How wonderful it is that we get to embody it and be who we are. And I know for us that as we allow ourselves to come out of this meditation, that we recognize that it has had an effect far beyond what we could possibly ever imagine. And it keeps going. It keeps running. This energy, the energy of peace, of love, of compassion, of kindness is flowing out from us, moving all around us. And I know that as we leave today, as we move back into Sunday life, we will feel this energy returning to us, whether it's from people or plants or animals, the air, will recognize, I had a part in this. And how grateful we are that we can do this. So take a breath. Allow yourself to be fully back in your seat.
So there's something that I need to say before I close this out, and that is that it's important to realize how powerful we are and that we're also powerful enough to create limitations in our life, create strange experiences in our life. And fear and doubt and societal conditioning can often act as obstacles. And so when you find that happening, in your life, whether you're doing a meditation for peace or you're just moving about your life on a daily basis, and you find something that comes up for you, ask yourself, what belief am I holding on to that no longer serves me? And then let it go. You know, somebody said, sometime, I told somebody one time, why don't you just give that to God? It was a negative thing. And they said, well, God's love, God is, you know, all of this good energy. How can God do anything with something negative? Well, you know, this power that is within us, this power that is all around us, is more powerful than we could possibly ever imagine. So who knows whether you say, okay, this is a negative about myself I don't like. Here, God, you do something with it. If it doesn't go and turn into light. It'll turn into whatever you want it to, actually. But the truth is, we have to become aware of it. So what belief am I holding on to that no longer serves me? So I want to thank you for participating in this meditation with me. I know that we hold within us the power to uh, create incredible, absolutely incredible ripples in our world. And I know that when we nurture our <clears throat> consciousness and we embrace our potential, our possibilities, that absolutely anything is possible. What we're doing is creating new openings for other things to emerge. So this week I want you to play with this idea of ripples. See, see what happens when you, you do a morning meditation about sending out love and see how it comes back to you during the day. I'm not sure I mentioned this last week, but I had... Um, a pillbox that you open up that uh, had gotten so that the little boxes wouldn't close anymore. And I thought, oh, I'm going to need to stop at the dollar store to get a new pillbox. And I got in the mail that I picked up on my way to the dollar store a uh, package of some vitamins that I had ordered, and guess what they added to it? <laughs> a beautiful little pillbox. Much, much better than I would have gotten at the uh, dollar store. So just remember this. The ripples of possibilities are endless. Absolutely endless. Yes. Can I make a comment? Yes. Um, when you were leading the meditation, I could picture other people's negative ripples coming toward me, and my ripples got bigger. So... You know, I, I don't know how to describe with what's going on in the world and everything because there's a lot of this coming into a lot of people where you just need to make sure that your ripple is bigger, bigger to deflect those you don't even ripples. You don't even need to make sure your ripple is bigger. Remember what I just said about the light? Why don't you... Declare that your ripples are, they are, divine energy, and the divine energy touches all that stuff and turns it into light. It's a lot easier than trying to push it away or... Okay. What? Can I make a comment? Yes. When you talk about the Dalai Lama and how he's baffled and so accepted, and, um, you know, that's what I get to do. You know what it is, I feel safe. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
uh, for those on who are listening later, Burl said that when I talked about the Dalai Lama laughing a lot, she said a giggle is like a ripple. <laughs> Definitely. That's one of the things I like about us is that we laugh a lot. We laugh a lot. All right, I'm, we did our, our I'm not going to do a spiritual mind treatment because we did our spiritual practice already. And let's say this affirmation together. With every inhalation, I claim peace as my divine birthright. With every exhalation, I express peace, knowing that it ripples out to affect the entire planet and beyond. Yes, thank you very much. And Jackson is giving us a gift of music this morning. Yay, Jackson! Hey, pretty good, huh? Colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of the people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry.
Happy Equinox. Thank you. Definitely. All right. So it's time for our <coughs> investment time, as I've been calling it lately. So let's say this affirmation together. I gratefully give from the fullness of my abundance, knowing my gift blesses the center, all in it and beyond, and so it is. God for these offerings. We thank God for our conscious awareness of the law of circulation, knowing that as we give, it comes back to us, pressed down and running over. And so the center celebrates these gifts, making it easier for us to work. And I know for each one of us that abundance, the possibility of abundance, it's one of these great ripples of the universe that each one of us is allowing to come into our experience. And it is good. It is God. And so it is. So it is. <sighs> oh, I want to mention one thing before we do our closing. And that is that uh, Scott is going to be our speaker next Sunday. So look, we look forward to that especially since he and Marianne have been on a cruise through uh, the British Isles. They what? The British Isles. The British Isles, yep. And, and they touched on France as well. So uh, this ought to be interesting. It'll be a good talk. He's a really good speaker, so come and see him next week. Would anyone like to read our community statement of inclusion? Olivia. And don't forget to sign these sheets here now for bowling, for Science of the Mind with Angelica, and for uh, Edwin's group on Saturday. Thank you. Good reminders. Is it? Okay. Yep. We, the Eureka Center for Spiritual Living, are a community that celebrates diversity, <coughs> fosters inclusion, champions inner work, and creates space for brave, vulnerable conversations. We are a community that honors the unique emanation of God that each person embodies and advocates with people for human rights and dignity for all. We are a community that blesses each other, sees sacredness in all life, remains learners and listeners so that we may grow together, and understands that oneness is not sameness. We know our, our beloved, beloved community, community is revealed, revealed more fully when, when we, we love, love each other well. well. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> all right, take it away. I invite you now to stand and join a circle, or make a circle, or be a circle. If you can't be a circle, be a ripple. Oh, good one. If you can't be a circle, be a ripple. 
All right. We are ready. Don't